Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Once that uh, gorilla showed up in a cowboy suit, things really got weird. What's that? Yeah, I can't believe... Oh, uh, yeah, I gotta go. Steve's here. Yeah, that's Steve. Yeah, he's wearing that shirt. Okay, anyway, talk to you later. Bye. Hey, Steve, what's going on? Not much, not much. Hey, is that the new phone? That is. This is the brand new Palm Pro. Cool. Uh, wait a minute. What did you just say? Brand new? Oh, you mean Palm Pro. Why are you saying it like that? Like what? It's pre. That's what I say. Pro. All right, all right, all right. Say this word. Preview. Okay, okay, that's, that's, that's right, that's right. All right, say this word for me. Prefix. Okay, okay. That's, yeah, that's the way I would say that. That sounds good. All right. Now say just this word. Pro. Ah, yeah, I give up. I can't take it. Just give me the phone. Give me the phone. Steve, Steve. it's time to do the tear. Steve, where are you going? What time you? to do the why, tear. Why are you so angry? Ah, ah. Steve. Ah. Steve. With him, it's too easy. The Paul Pre was hotly anticipated by fans of Palm smartphone devices. Since its debut at CES in January, bloggers, reviewers, and Palm Faithful have been tracking the product in the hopes of it being the device to compete with the iPhone. And according to early reviews, the phone is off to a good start. The multi-touch screen featured on the Pre is pretty good when compared to that of the iPhone or the HTC G2, also known as the Android phone. The resolution is very crisp featuring the 320 by 480 resolution also found in the G2 and iPhone, but with the smaller pre-screen, the image seems sharper. Once we've removed the screws and begin to take a look inside the boards that make up the pre, we see that Palm has gone with the same approach as their Apple brethren, using existing tried and true technology. Like the iPhone, this goes a long way in reducing the development and manufacturing costs of the phone thereby being able to pass the savings on to you, or just more money in their pocket, you know, whatever. First, let's take a look at the main board and identify the main components that make the Pre work. The main controller of the phone is located under the IC labeled Alpida K2132C1PB. Under this Alpida Mobile DDR2 SD RAM memory chip is the main processor of the Pre, the Texas Instruments OMAP 3430. This stack configuration is used not only as a way to connect two ICs that operate with each other, but also to save space. The choice of the OMAP 3430 is an interesting one. The OMAP 3430 was released last year and features multiple core architecture for improved performance and power consumption for multimedia applications. TI developed a unique user interface that made graphics easier to integrate into product designs. Using the lab capabilities of Semiconductor Insights, we were able to decap the ICs and take a look at the circuitry that makes this powerful device. To its left, we see the IC that provides the flash memory to store firmware for the device, Samsung's KMCG0000M is in fact a multi-chip IC consisting of four K9GAG08U0M 2 gigabyte ICs. Above that is the Pre's MEMS accelerometer, the device used to calibrate movements of the Pre that replicate live motion with movements on the screen. Accelerometers, interesting enough, have become a staple of mobile phone design, finding themselves in demand since Nintendo incorporated them into their Wii system. Keonix received a major design win when their KXS D9 3-axis MEMS accelerometer was chosen by Palm for the Pre. Let's bypass this Murata module for now and move right over to this device. TI gets another IC into the Pre with the selection of its TWL5030 Power and Audio Management IC. Not really a surprising choice considering the chip is optimized to work with TI's OMAP line of processors like the 3430 used here. 
The next board to take a look at is a separate board that serves as the radio board of the Pre. Essentially, the board that does the communication processing. Palm designers, oddly enough, use an older Qualcomm baseband processor to provide CDMA 2001X EVDO 3D technology, basically the standard in which this smartphone operates. This revision on the MSM 6800, done for litigation purposes, was released in 2007, but is essentially identical to the MSM 6800, which was first released in 2005. We find more memory on the communication board with the Samsung K5D1257ACC. This is another multi-chip package consisting of 64 megabytes of SLC flash and 32 megabytes of mobile DDR SD RAM. On the back of the board we find two Qualcomm components selected as they are part of the CDMA 2000 solution that incorporates the MSM 6801A. We have the RFR 6500 receiver and the RFT 6150 dual band CDMA transmitter. And lastly, we see a Maxim power management IC, the Max 8695. Now let's go back to the first board we looked at and the module we initially passed over. This particular module is somewhat interesting as it's the second module we've seen manufactured by Murata, the first being the one we found on the Apple iPhone. And just like its competitor, this module is a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth subsystem. The layout of the module is different, but the parts chosen are almost the same. Both the iPhone and the Palm Pre use the Marvell 88W8686 for Wi-Fi connectivity and CSR's Blue Core 6 ROM single chip for Bluetooth connectivity. Murata, Marvell, CSR, and Samsung memory devices all seem to be achieving multiple design whims in the smartphone market. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know about the punch for the weekend. Yes, I haven't told Steve. Yeah, I, oh, hey, I gotta go. Okay, bye. Thank you for joining us for the Teardown of the Palm Pre today. My name is Alan, this is Steve. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to email us at teardowntv at semiconductor.com. But until then, goodbye.